Aloha nui. Mahalo nui so much for being with us tonight for this Pahana presentation. Uh, you know, Museum After Hours is actually a relatively new program museum kicked off, and so this is our third iteration, and we couldn't be more excited to have our esteemed guests here and to be able to focus on the Tatao Marks of Polynesia exhibition during tonight's Pahana talk. We have um, very esteemed cultural practitioners and, and key advisors uh, who really, you know, made the exhibition possible. And so we have Sua Peter Suluape, we have uh, Sua Isaiah uh, Toetu'u, and we also have a Suluape Steve Looney. And I also just want to you know, pay, also acknowledge on Danielle Looney, uh, who has been very key also a collaborator for us. Um, and all, all of them have been part of the cultural advisory group that informed the Tatao Marks of Polynesia exhibition, uh, which was curated by Takahiro Kitamura of the Japanese American National Museum. And if you haven't yet seen that exhibition, it's on view in our long gallery in the Hawaiian Hall. So we encourage everybody to see it. If you haven't already, or to just go and see it again. Uh, so for tonight, you know, we're just going to have a, a you know, talk story conversation for about the next hour or so. Um, I just have you know, some few initial questions to get the conversation going, and then I, I'm going to open it up to the audience. And so I encourage everybody to you know, have a question in mind and don't be afraid to, to, you know, to share. Um, and then at around 7 o'clock, we're going to transition because there'll be a live uh, demonstration out on the lawn. And, um, and also everybody can go see the exhibition afterwards and enjoy the rest of the uh, Pahana festivities. So, mahal nui so much for being here and for traveling here and for, you know, um, just sharing space with us tonight. Um, you know, just real quick, I just, if, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and maybe sharing how you got involved and connected with the exhibition. Um, and anything you'd like to share just, you know, as, a, as an introduction. Um, so maybe, uh, Asua, if you'd like to start. Or no, oh yeah, 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 or maybe not. Either way, anybody. <laughs> or Asua, Peter. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm... Sua Peter Suwapu, and this with the um, Tatao exhibition. Uh, Suwapu Steve Looney and the family uh, started this from California, and everything um, to promote more and tell more about this um, Tatao history, the Tatao journey, and the Tatao family. And I, the privilege of being part of this is. Uh, I, I, I thank God for this opportunity, and I also thank these people, my brothers over here, for having this opportunity to go up with, uh, yeah, sorry about the mic, but yeah, to actually come out with the idea of doing the exhibition. It's not the first time to have an exhibition about the Tao, um, but to actually come out with a way that we can bring out the history that can make people understand of who we are and what we do, and the blessing that our family has been blessed with is such an honor. Uh, today is uh, actually the first time I'm involved in the, um, finally get involved because of pandemic and everything. But uh, it's such an honor to be in front of you guys and yeah, maybe chat more about it. Thank you. Talofa, my name is Suwape uh, Steve Looney. Um, how I got involved with this exhibition, uh, it all started with a conversation that I had with a very good friend of mine, uh, Takahiro Kitamura. Uh, he's a colleague of mine in tattooing, and uh, basically he had a, uh, a similar exhibition on Japanese tattooing in modern times, and uh, with the success of that at the Japanese American National Museum, um, I figured I'd ask him, I'd like to tell the story about our people and our culture and what's important about our family who have uh, been the stewards of this art form since its inception. Um, I'm really proud to be a, uh, a part of this and be a part of the uh, Suwape family. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be able to tell the story uh, through the eyes of the family who continue this, uh, this uh, art form and then also how it's uh, influenced the contemporary uh, works of tattooing of 
various other Polynesian tattooists that are uh, working now. Uh, my name is Soswape uh, Tetu, Isaiah, and uh, I've been very part of the family many years. Steve, Peter, the father. Um, I got involved in the exhibition with the, um, the featured amazing artists that include all of us, and of course, he was talking about touch base on some of the amazing work with traditional and contemporary. And good guys put these books together. I've been part of the family with Peter and the family for so many years, with just as I and Steve. And it's just great to be part of this and continue our, you know, like I said, promote awareness, good tattooing uh, ethics and things about Tatao. And, you know, hoping we've been, um, you know, those, um, those teachers to teach good quality of work versus what's, you know, what's out there in the media. And kind of, you know, uh, kind of keep us at kind of this, um, with this new time of uh, age of tattooing, you know, it was once in the dark, now it's in the light again. So it's more access to people, and hopefully we can use this show as a place of education and um, more of a widespread and give them, and set people on the right path, you know, and not have that stigma that was been around. So it's great, great job, family and stuff. So it's good. And, um, you know, in, in the process of bringing this exhibition to life, like, what were, what were some of the challenges or what were some of the key sort of themes that you really wanted to make sure was highlighted in that exhibition? Well, you know, when, uh, when we first discussed this, um, my idea behind it really was to um, highlight the, our family, you know, the family I, I'm with, the Suwapi uh, clan. And uh, because uh, they're not only are they the stewards uh, of the art form, but uh, they have been continuously promoting uh, not only the tattooing, but our culture in general um, since, since they've been tattooing. And um, I found this a, an opportunity to be able to share this with the world through the museum world. Um, it kind of lends some, I don't want to say legitimacy to it, but um, it exposes it to another group of folks that uh, not only share, might share the same feelings, but I would also like to learn more about it and also the direction that it's going right now. And um, I guess, and maybe Suave Peter, Suave, if you, um, if, if you wouldn't mind sharing, like, you know, in your experience, like, what are some of the biggest challenges in taking these age-old traditions and, you know, making it, um, you know, how to navigate sort of the, the contemporary popularization of of Tatao, you know, how, how are you navigating, um, you know, bridging, you know, the past with, with the contemporary usage of tattooing, you know, around the world? Um, <clears throat> I, I've, I've been in this industry ever since I was very young age, and getting involved with, uh, b before I even became a tattooist, it was, I was with my dad my whole life. So my learning experience of this is that it's not, it's not, an, 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 um, it's not something that you just pick up and just walk and do, you know? There's a lot to learn. There's, there's more in this thing, in this tattooing world that you have to dig in before you even become, <clears throat> become a tattooist. So with me, traveling from when I was young, watching him work and then I start work, traveling out of Samoa and trying to, um, <clears throat> and trying to work with the different kind of cultures and trying to work around um, different um, ideas from other cultures to become. So today, Tatao is very different. As such a, I don't know what happened with the last 10 or 15 or 20 years, <clears throat> how it become different. But our, when it, when, uh, that tradition of Tatao that I came, that I was grew up in Samoa from, coming to New Zealand, come here, come to America and everywhere, I've learned that every single year, there's always something change. It's not easy to actually try to adopt different cultures into it and make it part of your culture, right? So, but going through that, actually I learned a lot that I have to, it's not something that I have to ignore. So as you're asking, <clears throat> it's, 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 not, it's not an easy task, but 
working with it as such an experience, interesting experience that I've actually come this far. I've been working as a tattooist for 22, going to 23 years now. And um, I'm, I'm praying for many more years to do that with the idea and the mind that it's gonna be back to that tradition that I, that I know from the beginning. When I came here, it was um, Slope Stevens, Slope Shell that I met here, that they are my brothers here in Hawaii. And with the work they were doing, they, they did so much. They gave out everything to create a, a good platform for the Sulape family here, the traditional Tatao family here in Hawaii and the rest of America. It's, it, uh, like I said, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's doable. It's just that we have to come out with the right idea and right way of bringing out the truth about this whole history. It's, it's always the history that makes change. So when touch base with those things, it, it's, a, yeah, it's not an easy thing, but it's, it, it can be done. That, that's the change that I've noticed. That it's not an easy thing coming from that traditional to where it is now. Yeah, it's a very hard experience. So Isaiah, what, how, in your experience, yeah. He's right, you know, throughout the many years, Tatao has changed. Um, not only is as well as the contemporary part, also with tools and things, and you know, as the tools evolve, the patterns evolve. Um, and like Peter was saying about communicating, like, we feel that as a form of tattoo is, tattoo is a form of communication. You know, we, we relate to the people we touch and back and forth, and um, you know, it's, it starts off with ideas, and I think with contemporary it gives us that expression to feel, to express, and things you know. But then we have to traditionally do malus and we separate those, you know. Uh, and it's people who come knocking our doors to ask, hey, I want a little piece of your culture. You know, they're not going to go to the food, the malus and bears. So we start off with the little here. And sometimes they grow into bigger, amazing stuff. Like I've seen amazing sleeves done with, you know, the tools. And it, it just keeps growing. Um, also take into mind that other cultures are also getting involved. Um, the Soa family clan also bless people, other Polynesian cultures with the Tatao to restore and revive some of their work. And they also are communicating and we're back and forth and learning and we're actually innovating with the tools. And we know we're just trying to see what we can do with the tools and what it can push its limit and what we can be done. Things that cannot be done, we try it, you know. And I think challenges in life help us as an art of artists. And like I said, Tatao is different now. It has changed over the many years and I think it's just gonna keep growing, you know, it is. So it's, maybe it's just the way we, we communicate, as well as a carpenter communicates through his art and skills. So we, the Fungo Tattooists kind of use our, you know, our hands and tools, our mind to communicate. And, so, and we make friends and family and, you know, we create bridges. Tatao is more of a connection. Um, Steve, do you have anything to add? Um, <clears throat> I think the, the changes that I've seen personally myself, um, I haven't worked uh, with the tools as long as uh, Peter and Isaiah, but um, he, he, as far as like contemporary works is concerned, as Peter mentioned before, involving other cultures, you know, Hawaii is a melting pot of different groups of people from all walks of life and in the world. Um, so. That's one thing that I've seen as far as like the contemporary side of it is uh, is mixing the, not only the different styles but the different cultures that help tell the stories of uh, a lot of our people now. You know, yeah. um, I, I think to me that's one of the, the probably the most uh, recognized change in it is the mixing of styles and cultures into the contemporary form of tattooing yeah. and. Um, I think it's helped a lot of people to be able to identify their uh, their background through through those means and through that way of telling your story. You know? And you know, to elaborate, what you're saying innovate in a way with respect. You know, some there's a cultural appropriation with things. Sometimes we have to innovate, but also give comments to the, the the people that we you know we're innovating with. You know, and so I think that we need to tell that media about that because. Some of those other guys out there are just tattooing and just kind of putting a lot of things together, but sometimes just to have that little <clears throat> kind of connection with the people, because symbols are a language. Mm. You know, they were a language that's 
has been pushed away, but you know, um, if you draw a fish and then spell the word fish, those are two different meanings. Mm. But if I relate to the word, they can see the pattern for it. So you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, you know, what they're saying is like, how do we, uh, you know, make sure we have that appropriate of, where you innovate, we understand what we're doing with things. Mm. Yeah, because it's, that's the thing what we're doing, we're communicating with other cultures. As well, we're exchanging. I'm going to just take a moment. If anybody has any questions at this point, um, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, and I, I can also keep going. But if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to raise your hand. And we can, you know. But um, you know, to kind of as a follow-up question, um, like, would you say that's a that, that's a misconception in in the culture that you know there isn't? Um, or what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you think people have of Tatao um, that needs to be you know addressed or, or you know? Spoken Our about. family, we're pretty knowledgeable about other people's culture, and mm. we try the best we can to do the most appropriate good things. But, uh, mm. you know, like we said, we're challenging right now with um, media is people just picking up the tools and working with the things and not taking the proper, you know, blessings from the family and stuff, and mm. um, probably self calling their names. And that becomes a problem because now we have this group of misleading, and then here are the real the fungus that's keeping it alive and trying to keep that. And it's just, to me, I think there's accountability and responsibility. It's just the only, and that's what I think Dad taught us. Yeah, the tools has responsibility. It's mm -hmm. not just pick and go. It's there's a there's this whole ritual of keeping those tools very, you know, and make sure it's in the right hand so it gets the right people done. And um, because you know, markings can markings can also how you say condemn you into the wrong path. Mm -hmm. you know? And it can actually make you uplift you and heal you. So, so I think. It's, with the trend of us tattooing, we want to make sure we maintain that we're doing the right things, and we do. We have meetings and we talk about things like this and what we can do to better our family so our, you know, the family clan stays in that, you know, like, hey, we, we, hopefully we're in the right lane, you know. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we just educate people out there about those things, you know, because, yeah, it, it, it's, like, you know, it's happening fast and quick, and we can't, you know, the same, it, it takes a long time to grow a tarot, but it takes a very fast to Instagram something real quickly, you know. So we make sure that we we educate these children with these things because we want the next student to carry on what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we can't challenge that. Uh, uh, do you any have anything to add about you know what accountability looks like you know in kind of. uh, what what does a accountability looks like you know in your practice and in, in how you teach others like uh, yeah what what does that look like in the ideal world? Um, <clears throat> with the uh, <clears throat> tattooing, tattooing, with uh, to me when it comes to tattooing in my family, I start thinking of the sixth generation, including me. So then I think of how it gets to me, and after that, then I think of how I'm going to carry that to the next generation. So what I'm saying is those changes from all those generations. <clears throat> Why did they, how, what did they do to make it to the next generation, to the next generation, to where we are now? And what we can do to move on. As uh, um, so, uh, Sia was saying, social media these days is such a big thing to connect. And I'm sure by now, as we speak, it's already on social media. <laughs> yeah. The whole eye. world has probably already seen it. But what I'm saying is, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a platform that, at so, that to me, I'll, I'll, I'll make myself an example. Every time I do work, I ban photos and videos. There's a reason why. I always believe that social media is not the way to do this thing. It's not the way for people to actually learn because watching and hearing anybody can speak in those videos and whatever you hear people believe things some of the things that's in even people that don't even understand about what's going on yeah. for somebody that don't understand about my culture will pick anything that's said in there even somebody that speaks that doesn't know nothing about what's going on so those are the things that we're really careful of so when it comes to tattooing with me <clears throat> and all those changes 
And I wish, I wish, as I said, I was saying, there's a lot of um, different cultures. And, um, before that, I just want to mention this. The, with the Sulawapi family, Sulawapi Aisyah Tetu, Sulawapi Aisyah Tetu is the first um, Tongan to form. It's the revival of Tongan Tatatau Taraka in the world. In the world. And um, being, part, being part of Isaiah's family is a big thing to us. Being part of me and, and, and Sulapa Steve has been involved this, in this relationship for a very long time. And to carry it to the next step, we also have other cultures, Filipino, Maori, Tahiti, and all Morea, and all those um, islands as well. They do the same work. But one thing is adopting um, different cultures, like what I said before, adopting other cultures' um, motives and trying to make it yours. It's not, it's not your culture. When it comes to tatau, tatau means must. As in Samoa, tatau has multi-meaning to it. First, it means must. It's a must for a Samoan man and a Samoan woman to go through that journey. But not all Samoan men and Samoan women can. So that's something that I need to understand. So when I say it, it's not something that you can just pick up and walk away and do whatever. No, there's a lot more to learn about yourself, your family, your culture before you go through the top. Other cultures, they might have their own way of doing it as well. So that's what I meant about it's not something I can just adopt anybody's culture um, and the way they do things and be part of mine because mine is, I, I don't want to disrespect my ancestors. What they did to bring it up to where I am is what I'm supposed to carry and be proud of and make it better. So today, as, our, um, as we connect with other um, different cultures and trying to make it a, a better life for the Pacific people, and all those cultures that come out with this, because they, they all used to unite in this tatau. So in the other meaning of the word tatau, connection. Tatau means in Samoa, connecting the other side to the other side, like connecting a rope, tie it on that side and then tie it on this side. Both sides are connected. That's another meaning of the word connection. So to me, the way it is with Tatao is connecting us Samoans, us Tongans, us Filipinos, and every other islands of the Pacific that does this to the rest of the world. But it doesn't mean that you have to take it out there without that mana of your culture. It doesn't have to work that way. So when I said earlier that there's a lot of changes in this, in this art of Tatao, there is a lot of changes. The reason why? Because social media. And people that just came up on social media and learned whatever they heard or seen on social media, try to be part of it and try to own it and make their own history, turn it to their own way. My thing is I, I, I have to relate back to my ancestors and make sure that we walk that path. And I take my head off to my brothers over here Especially this guy, Sulapi Steve and Danielle, is always the ones that always come up with the idea of exhibitions. Exhibition. I always try to like, so do we have money for this? <laughs> uh, he's always had that faith uh, that this is the best way of doing it. So I thank God for it today that we actually have a chance to actually. There's a lot of things that needs to be learned. Everybody needs to know, but. Hey, one day at a time, you will learn. Sulapi, so, Steve, um, how, how do you navigate social media? What, I, uh, to be honest, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of people follow me, I follow a lot of people, but I don't engage in any conversation. I don't engage in anything negative. I post my work and that's it. You know, I don't post any personal stuff because I don't want, like he said, people, you know, yeah. 
take things the wrong way or misconstrue it in the way that they want to believe it. So social media can be a blessing for some folks yeah. in business and, and whatnot, but it can also be really disastrous for some folks. <laughs> so we all, all of us are aware of those, of those things. But yeah, I don't engage in it in that, in that way. Just as yeah. a means of advertisement. <laughs> that's it. No disrespect. <laughs> if that's what you do, that's what you do. Yeah. But if you do social media, that's your thing. But that's just what I believe. Yeah. I think it's hard for artists' period to, to, to connect with using media. It was, and I think we don't have an understanding for it. Because when you, you know, like you said, when you we post some stuff and then we want to share, but it gets into a wrong mindset and it's, uh, it's comprehended differently. And they go in, you know, and it's like, how do we tell those? But yeah, so better we don't, because like I said, we can make them go the wrong way. <laughs> so sometimes we just, you know, maybe you better come to us, talk story over a classroom or something, and they will they get the right story, right? But it's true. It's hard to navigate with the media. It's great in one, and it's one in the other hand. It can be actually disastrous, like you see, you say, it's this. Work with you and against you at the same time. It's like us. <laughs> Mm. It actually kind of calls attention to the importance of curation when, when telling the stories or, and putting out information, like probably all the work that it took to put together this exhibition to, you know, present it in the way that was respectful and appropriate. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that's no small task. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just want to check if there's any questions in the audience. Okay. I have, a, I have another question, which is... Um, it might have come up actually a question before, but I'm curious if, if maybe the answers, you know, evolve. Um, you know, how, how do you approach, you know, when non-Pacific Islanders want to engage or to, you know, have tatao and, and, and become, you know, to take that, take that responsibility on, you know, what, what's, what's your, you know, approach to, you know, interacting and interfacing with non-Pacific Islanders when it comes to tatao? And, Sorry, No, I I just curious like what what is your approach when non Pacific Islanders no, want to um, you know engage with Tatao and how do you navigate that? I go I, I go back to what I said just now. Um, it's our way of connecting to the world. The history of tattooing in the islands in Samoa. It was travel. It was travel. The tools travel into Samoa. Yeah. yeah. And then Sua had it. It was given to Sua to own the tools. And then Sua accept Toluena to be the person as part of his family. So that's how it became Sua and the Falilua or the Aino Sua, which is Toluena is the second family. Nobody else. But to have, every time I get, I always get this question, even in our Samoan people, older, you know, the elders in Samoa, they always have this question, why do um, Samoan Tufungas do bitters for non-Samoans? It's a, I just speak from my own experience. It's, 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 to me, when I hear it, it's, it's like, your vision is just from here to that wall. You're not looking beyond that wall. We're here doing this art for Samoa, connecting to the rest of the world. We don't even know where the tools were from. As they said, it was from Fiji. If Fiji don't have tattoos, then the question is, where were them before Fiji? Mm. Well, that was it. There's nothing else. Um, Filipino does tapping as well. Um, somewhere in Europe, there's tattooing as well, tapping. The word uh, tattoo comes from the tatau. It's just the way they pronounce the word tatau as tattoo, as T-A-T-U. Then you don't, you figure it out. I've, I, I was trying to figure out how it became us. Mm. It just happened to be Su'a and Tolowena to be the Tufunga and created this art, that part of our culture. And I was a more traditional way well, to have the pit. And so it was for the, for the Tongans and the rest of the Pacific Islands. This is, what we, this is who we are. But accepting an outside 
and, and, and a different culture person coming into our culture, to me, there's no disrespect. They just want to be your family. They just want to be part of your culture. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, to me, it, it's just, yeah, that was, that was my, that's always the, the answer that comes to my mind. Your vision is just from here, from where you're sitting, to the wall. You're not looking beyond. You're trying to connect yourself to the rest of the world. Mm. Every single culture, that's what they do. You know, as you're living life, it's, you're moving forward to the, to the future. You don't want to live in the past. So my way of thinking about that is that this is our way as a Tatao family. It's not the rest of Samoa that does Tatao. Tatao, the Tatao family is just within Su'a and Tolowena. That's it. So to us, it's our way of connecting milk culture to the other culture. Yeah. Anything, anything else to add? Anything, anything? No, it's good with the idea. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. a question I was asked, so it's kind of yeah. touchy, and you know, everybody always asks it all the time, but we are <laughs> different, yeah. And like um, I said, it's about sharing cultures and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. But, um, I think it's wrong when someone tells well, a person who's not tattooed to tell the other person what not. You know, that's mm -hmm. the part where I think it gets like kind of crazy. But yeah, okay. uh, he said it right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And you know, in terms of connections, like what are what are some of the cultural connections that you are personally interested in in, in forging? Like what are the what are or you know that that kind of cultural exchange that you are you know kind of um, speaking about earlier? You know, um, are there are there certain cultural bridges that you are interested in, in, in forging or focusing on in your own practice? In a, our culture to the world, you mean? Yeah, yeah, or, or, you know, intercultural collaboration. Are there other, you know, um, you know styles of tattooing around the world Close that you style. have personally, like, um, you know, explored in, in that kind of cultural exchange or cultural connections? Or just in general, if, you know, if there are any particular types of connections that interest you and, and, and inspire you right now? I can say that the, the one connection that has been made uh, is with our brother here. Yeah. Mm. So with the Tongan, uh, with the Tongan people and the Tong and uh, our brother here, Sua yeah. Isaiah, who's who's revived that that yeah. form, and mm. you know that's the one connection that we've made now. I mean, aside from the rest of Polynesia, yeah. that uh, he has been actively pursuing and, and bringing yeah. forth. Yeah, well, the Tongan tattoo was, like you were saying, there was um, there was the Sua clan of dad and the brothers, and then we all met at the same time. I met with Trisha Allen, and you know, she's also a master in ourselves, too, you know, so don't forget our, our teacher, too, you know. Um, and that connection was very important in that time, but um, it's a very touchy subject with the Tongan tattooing because of the fact that it's, um, it's been abolished by a, a monarch, and to revive it again, it takes another step. It's not about putting design together is actually taking the next step is making it accepted by the people. Mm. So it's, it's a long journey and it's not, uh, you know, it, it's not a, um, something that's going to be overnight. Mm. It never was intended to be overnight. So it takes process. It takes all us working together and making it so the right people do it the right way but then versus this, uh, yeah, media again, mm. you know. Um, acknowledging the people that you know, um, especially with um, Sua Dad, where we come from, you know. I mean, for him to complete the first uh, Tongan tattooing in the 99, in, 90, in 2000, that was the, you know, the, the beginning of the unbelievable. Mm. That, you know, so that's another history. That's not time for this time, but we'll talk later about that time. <laughs> but I'm carry on that. Uh, and thank like I said, these are brothers that we worked on. They've seen all the, the journey, they've been part of the journey of life, you know, and as well as. So that'll be another chapter. Hopefully we'll talk later, yeah, because that's, that's years of just collecting them. Um, it's like we said, media are, you know, you're trying to prepare this finest food to present, but then it's been uh, snapped to, you know, so we'll talk another time for that one. <laughs> There's also a, a big thing, um, connection between um, traditional tattooing and modern tattooing too. Mm -hmm. Nowadays we have a lot of um, Polynesian and also non-Polynesian that does island patterns doing using the idea of modern tattooing. So that, that, that's the connection. 
because every every different motifs, every different designs in the traditional Samoan tatau and malu means something. It means to the person. It means to your duties, your service, and everything about you and about your family, about your culture. And when what I what I'm saying is the connection between modern tattooing nowadays, they um, they they have that. Um, they connect it with the like modern kind of tattoo ideas, trying to use patterns, island patterns to make it more meaningful yeah. than just a, a a bird or a flower. Yeah. Having with uh, uh, island patterns can make it different. That bring out that story, or maybe an island flower or or, or something else. You know, you know what I mean. But yeah. yeah, so that's the connection. And we've been doing conventions for. He just got back from the convention in, in California as well. I mean, the Bay Area. <clears throat> but that's what we do. So we're trying to connect us up, even just, not just doing our work from where we're at or with our own people or whoever that comes through us, but we also go out and try to connect with the rest of the world, even people that don't even come for tattoos, but to learn and pick up something that mean to them. Because some people, they don't wear the tattoo, but they believe. They are part of that culture because they have so much respect in them that they don't they, they don't want to have a tattoo, but I'll take it as part of my culture. So it's 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 a lot to learn from this thing, but that's why I always I'm always saying this about social media. It's hard to say, but if you're just watching that video thinking that you're gonna learn something from the video, then go use it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One thing you have to know. Everything that you want to learn is not in that video. Yeah. It's what, what you're learning is just in that video. But about that video is something they have to, to go and research. Yeah. Questions from the audience? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, um, okay. And then we'll go into the back. Yes. Actually, my understanding is the tattoos it has to do with, with uh, your family and like your tradition from your family do you like with six generations do you usually like add your own like uh, style as well or do you like with each generation is there like a different style that gets added or a different thing gets added yeah. um, <clears throat> with uh, thank you with the um, with the work that I do now I have never changed anything all I have done is to tidy it up make it look better but I'm still using the patterns that was that my dad used from day one when I first watched him. Everything that I do right now is everything that my dad did. And because with, with me, I believe that's what he was, it was, he was given from his dad or what from his great granddad to, her, to, to his dad. So it's, 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 it's hard for me to change anything. Yeah. Thank you. And then what do you do in the back and then, and then and, and I'll get right back to you. Okay. Thank you very much um, for, for sharing with us today. Thank you for letting, keeping this art form alive. Malo, Malo, Malo. Malo. Uh, for someone who wants to begin this journey, uh, to wear the bell, uh, where does it begin? Uh, you, you send an email and then uh, you make a <laughs> 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 Sorry, brother. I, um, I found out from... <laughs> I found out from... Uh, <laughs> I found out from Stop is Steve that, uh, that that's what you you want to go through the journey and um, yeah, thank you, thank you for always. I mean, I always thank people that that eager to to get this and be part of this family because I always say this that if if not for you, I won't be here. This family won't be alive today. This tatau was tatau would be gone if it wasn't for people like yourself. I, um, to, to, to actually go through, you're someone, first of, first of all, you're someone. Non-Samoan speaking, or even the color of your skin, does not signify anything about you being not someone or that you, you have to learn more or whatever. One percent Samoan blood, you're someone. There's nothing, I always, I, I have, I, I try to say this, but and they, I don't believe in afakasi. 
When they say afakasi, it, 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 it takes away the meaning of the word samon. Yeah. If you're samon, you're samon. There's no such thing as afakasi. If you have half, like 1% or even half of that in you, you're samon, you're full samon. You already have that blood. I also get a, um, a question about non samons married to samon women or samon men. Does that make them samon? Of course that makes them some. They're gonna have kids. And that's make them full blood. Right? And so for somebody like yourself going trying to like wanting to be part of um, the journey and find out what you have to do to be to, to, to be able to go through, I'm telling you, it's from here. If you have the heart for it, you're always proud of your family, uh, of yourself being a someone. You don't, you know, the language always comes. That's one of the things that's in you, they, you have to, those are the things that you have to work on. Learn your language, do your service, go cook, do the umu or anything, but it starts from here. If you have the heart to, have, to, to, to wear the tatao, because when you have it on your skin, that's one thing that you're doing on earth that you're gonna take with you down, six feet down. So believe in that, because everything that you have in your hand, it's gonna be gone by the time you're gone. Uh, you're, going, you're going home with your pair. I uh, thank you for being one of them. You know, I, I just pray that one day you're gonna get the chance to go through your journey. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'll say, uh, Isaiah, I mean, my voice is okay. One major change that's happened in recent decades is the switch from bone homes oh. to metal that wow. you were very instrumental in. Can yeah. you talk about that a little wow. bit? Wow, that's pretty, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was an experiment, it was pretty interesting. Um, that's what you mentioned because it had a lot to do with, I think dad at the time had a hard time finding the, the teeth. Um, he did mention to us back in the Tangaloa's house um, that I think the pigs in Samoa, the teeth were not growing any more teeth, is that right? Mm. The, they were not getting bigger bones. That was one factor. In other words, the resources were getting limited. With, And I remember the set of tools that he came with where they were saving every piece of the bone and putting it together and you'll just see a bunch of them just like, wow, this, you know, what used to be a lot, now it's just, and he had a, a cup, yeah, full of bones, just finding things what could fit and last real quick so he can do the, finish the job. One breaks, make another one. And, um, and then the hygiene factor over the years where we started using uh, cold sterilization versus other sterilization, and um, it was about that time, I think. So it was just, and this again, we're using Western mindset world where we learn tattooing where we learned how to make needles. In the old days, needles were never made for Western machine artists. We had to make our own machine, make our own inks, make our own tubes actually. You know, back in the days, tattooing was still underground. So we remember now, back in the days, it was like 99, it was still underground. Tattooing was still underground, so there was nothing catered to the industry. Everything we had to make by, I mean, Trisha tattooed with a, she made a power box out of a Radio Shack. I don't know if we still know Radio Shack. Uh, it's still around? No? No, it's gone. But she's an amazing power box. She can, make, she can build some amazing power pack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, and it was this weird looking radio dial and uh, she had some names and she just made some, yeah, and it would travel with her everywhere. Um, but it was a time of innovation, it had to move on. So we decided to make this set of tools and I went back to the shop and I had made this uh, little set and uh, we started with small and I modeled after a mag and we just started. But the problem was the needles were too small and then, and, Saw an idea, and then an I did, and I saw a Japanese idea, and I said, you know, we can, but it's about the soldering and making it fit, so. But it was a, this batch of guys were getting tattooed from a show, so I would bring one tool, and we'd try it out with one guy, I think it was a small tool, but, um, and then, so we use all the other bone tools, and we'll try it out, and then if it didn't work, it was, oh, too tight to this, and we'll go back, make another. So we give it to the pilot to drive, and we come back, fix it, come back, and it took like maybe three to five attempts and I think it was uh, our song, Aso, and he made the lines and goes, yeah, this is it, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and then from there, just kind of made it set, kept making more sets, and then from there, then I think that was the set for a while. We didn't challenge the Kapulu till later, yeah? Because it was just so many, just a lot of solder and trying to maintain that solder because, you know, it gets too heavy and even the plastic changes. So it was still good in the beginning. And then actually what we lashing it with and make it, and then, um, at that time, we went to our county convention 
That was what year was that convention? The music in 2000. Music in. Yeah, we went to and um, they didn't allow bone tools, so certain conventions didn't allow. Uh, and this was happening a lot to our families, and they would fly all of them somewhere just to get there to be told can tattoo. And it was like, wow, this is you know. So it was it was up to dad to make the decision, say, hey, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll switch over to the tools, and then. And then that did also a lot of things too. Like I said, the tools changed and some of the designs got a little bit more elaborate and we got, and then our contemporary work, right? The sleeves got a little bit more incredible, you know, so it was kind of a good change. Um, I know, and I guess all the bone users, don't get me wrong, it's just that it's amazing they're still using it and it's great for them. Um, uh, the resources are accessible to them, but back home, you know, the resources were not as accessible. And that's also to Tonga too. Remember, we're at all islands, so in the ancient time, our tools would sometimes come from other islands because we didn't have certain um, materials. And be mindful, in the Polynesian culture, we, we shared our cultures, but mostly also the resources. It was very important to keep the ties, you know? Wood from here, and then things from here, and bones from there, shells from there, um, just so we could survive and, and maintain our culture and serve the chiefs and serve all the, 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 the ali'is and stuff. So resources very important, and being that Metal. I mean, if we had metal back then, we would have used metal, you know? So it was one of those things probably, um, it's still, the, uh, to me, I think it's, um, how long have we been using it for? I, um, the metal, uh, the, more than 15 years. More than 20 years. Yeah, more than 20 years. Yeah, 20 years, yeah. So it's been, yeah, yeah it's been common use. Um, Healing-wise, faster. Um, less trauma, um, you know, you're not ripping, so. It, it did a good change over the years, and um, I don't know, we just be, they keep perfecting the movements and designs, and we just keep making the tools. He makes an order, and then we go, okay, make this, make like that, make double. <laughs> uh, he uses the metal tools like crazy. Just, he, can <laughs> he outlines the biggest tool, and I'm like, oh my god, this good. <laughs> I always follow this too. <laughs> yeah, Learn every day. Yeah, he'll, he'll make a double, and he'll make a line out of that double, and be amazed, yeah. But yeah, it was, thanks for the question, because yeah, it's, I think it's something that people don't realize that it took process with the, the metal tools, with the bone, the needles. And Can you describe them a little bit better, the tools and the plastic for people that aren't familiar? Yeah, I mean, you guys seen the museum, right? The, um, have they seen the, um, the, the display of the new tools? They looks like tiny, just let's say example, like a uku comb, but tighter. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way, yeah. More tight, more small the needle, yeah. And the plastic piece is like a um, plexiglass that used to be the turtle shell, replaced. Yeah, so we replaced it. And that also was another mission, the plastic used back home. Yeah. I mean, I had one set I cleaned up for dad was, uh, and, and his one, it was actually the side of the radio that it cut out. <laughs> that was left over, they busted the plastic and they used that. Yeah, so whatever they could use back home. And the tools look like, like a rat rod, you know, like a car come out of a, a rot, and they, but when they do the work, it's like, oh my God, it's just super clean, like, you know? So it wasn't about how the tools look, it's the guy behind the tool was, you know, his mind, his, you know, malo sao sao, malo you know? So we have time for maybe one more question. I did see yours first, I'm gonna just hand this to you and then. Hi, I have a quick question. Um, in the, I guess tradition, um, why were the two sisters from Fiji asking for women to be tattooed, not the men? And why was it, yeah, why was a woman first, if that's true? <laughs> um, that was the, as they say, the, when the women, when the two women swam the ocean, that was the song. They said they sang the song. Um, when they get to Samoa, they're gonna tattoo a woman. Uh, to me, to be honest, I'm, maybe because they were women, there's no history behind that. Maybe because they were women, that they think that when they get home, when they get to the islands, they're gonna tattoo a woman. Mm. Well, as they said in the, and that song that now everybody make it a history. They saw a clamp, they went down to get it, came back, sang the song wrong, and then the men got tattooed. I, 
I have, we, we have, the family, dad is, has been researching and trying to connect the dots and trying to figure out how it happened. The belief is it's always been men. No, in, not in history of Samoan tattooing that there was a woman got the pair in history. It was nothing. That's one, I, has, I have to bring this up because it happened in my family with uh, one of the uncles that I'm sure Professor no. <clears throat> he did the woman out of context. That, that was his own decision. He later on figured out it's wrong for him to actually want to be the first to do a woman. It's not in the history of tattooing. It's always been men. The woman in our culture is sacred. It's, uh, it, we protect our women, our women. We, they, they are the most feminine part of families. We look after them in the most sacred way. So no, nobody, nowhere in our culture that was supposed to be a woman go through that kind of pain and the brother they are watching. So we, we're trying to connect the dots that how can they say that the woman get through this pain with every, <clears throat> I'm sure most of us over here has already seen how we um, exercise this um, process. If, I'm, if my sister lying down, I'm not there, and I'm, I'm gonna pray that I'm not even alive. It's just the way it is, the process is, but everything's traditional. Now to, to me, it's, it's, it's not in the history that there's a Samoan woman that got the bear for, history of, for the history of tattooing in Samoa. If that answers your question. Thank you. Um, I know I, we're, we're sort of at that time where we're actually supposed to be pivoting to the actually the live demonstrations that were going to uh, take place on the Great Lawn. Um, but you know, just just in closing, um, uh, you know, our sharing a space here. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe each of you can share um, either either you know something like a main takeaway that you would hope that you know our audience gets from the exhibition from Tatao or um, and or just maybe an upcoming project or something that you're, that you're gonna be working on in the future, um, or an opportunity that you're working on in the future that you're excited about. And then as, as a way to kind of close us off. Well, I think, yeah. uh, for me personally, well, you know, I've already explained why my, well, my intention was behind this and why I wanna do it. I hope that people that, who do come to view the exhibit get to learn something about this cultural practice of ours and um, it, whether they're Samoan or not can appreciate and respect uh, that this is an art form that's been around for you know for thousands of years and the fact that uh, this family is still helping to keep this alive um, and I just hope people can appreciate that and learn what we've uh, achieved with it and the direction that it's going. Um, <clears throat> my thing is, I, what I wanna wanna see and experience with with everybody that comes through, or even for the exhibition, I'm praying that everybody can learn something. But one thing is, respect your culture. Respect your culture. Who you are is is your culture. If you're someone, respect your culture and love your culture. Love your identity. Because uh, it will make you connect to different other identities. If you know your person, people will know you. Uh, we'll be doing demonstration over there. Everybody's welcome to have a, have a look and see how it process, hoping that you're going to learn something. And not just because of the tapping or the sound or how we produce the work over there, but something around, or even the act of people that's around learn something from there and be proud of it be, be proud of your culture um, for me observation research just maintain the integrity of our family and tatao um, 
I continue to service, you know. Um, that's one thing we realized that uh, Tatao is we, we, we're serving at the same time. But um, I think with that, I think, uh, and also spreading more knowledge about what we are and continue that. And every day is exciting, every day. Every piece I do every day or always, it's, it's always a new, we, we take a, you know, you can have a bad day in the morning, come up, when you get to that behind the mat and behind the tool, it's your day, it's your time. So keep that happiness always so you always flowing and I think that's maintained that healthiness. I think that's, that's I think is where we are right now with Tufum. And like I said, not towards the media, you want to come, come, you know, keep it as, and um, I think we'll bring more value back to our Tatao life and skills, I think, yeah. So, but yeah. I thank you guys. Thank you so much, each of you, for yeah. just this remarkable sharing of, of insight and knowledge today, and for all of you for joining us this evening. Um, it's been it's been an honor moderating this conversation, and and you know we're actually this is going to continue out into the Great Lawn, so we invite everybody um, to join us out there and to go back and see the exhibition, maybe with new eyes or new perspectives after this conversation. Um, we're going to have more of these talks. Actually, I think the next. Museum After Hours, we're gonna have another conversation here in the Atherton Halal, also um, inspired by the exhibition, and we'll have a closing festival as well in July. Um, so thank you all so much, and have a great rest of your evening at After Hours. I want to come last night.